Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bits of Good Bootcamp. I am Ben Lava Lamp Holmes, and in this video, I just wanted to clarify a little bit about what re-rendering actually means. So when we update a state variable, what code is actually going to get run, and how does that change what's going on on our page? So I'm taking us back to the Lava Lamp example that we did, where we created a button where whenever we click it, we want to update our state variable with the next index inside of this colors array. And then that colors array changes which uh, background color is being applied to our section with some CSS. So if we remember how it works, whenever we click the button, we want to cycle through our array and change the color to the next color inside of that array. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it's very straightforward. But what if we wanted to augment this a little bit and make it more dynamic by having the color change every second um, on an automatic timer? So every second, I want the color to cycle to the next index in the array. Well, if we think back to when we were learning asynchronous functions, you may know of some uh, functions that we can use to delay code to run every second or to run every second on an interval. Um, and those two functions are set timeout and set interval. Um, and thinking about the functionality that we want, um, in this case, you might think, well, we want our color to change every second. So we want to fire our function um, every second continuously, which means that we probably want to use set interval in order to run something on an interval instead of only running it once after one second of waiting. So I'm just going to see what happens when I create my set interval function. I'm just going to throw it right above the return, just like I've been doing with my button code and my state code and everything else. Um, it's keeping everything consistent. So I'm going to create my function. I'm going to say I want to run this function every second. I'm going to add a console log in here to show uh, that this code gets hit. And I'm going to copy our state code inside of here because we want the same code that was working in our button um, to run every second. As we can see, it is running every second. But if you look down at our log, something very interesting is going on, where instead of just running it once and then again and again and again, um, it actually starts to run exponentially more often. And now we're getting into the thousands. Our uh, page is strobing kind of sporadically because everything's getting out of sync. Um, and we're dealing with a lot of problems here. So first of all, to prevent my processor from exploding, I'm going to comment out at our state code um, in order to stop what's going on over here. So let's break down step by step why we were running into this weird exponential issue over here. So if we walk through what a re-render actually does, um, we can take a look at what happens on the first render, and then when we update our set, uh, when we set our state, what's going to happen on the next render. So on the first render of our page, doing absolutely nothing. Um, we are going to uh, start at the top here. We're going to create our colors array that we're referencing. Um, we create our state variable and our setter. And then we create our uh, button click function. And inside of that function, we create um, our set color index, which will just change the color index. And if you remember, every time we call a state function, it's actually going to re-render the page. If you remember, that's the whole purpose of a state variable is whenever you change the value of that variable, you want the page to reload so that your changes can actually be seen on what's being shown. Um, and the same thing is going on here, where after we've created um, these just basic functions, we are creating our interval. And inside of this interval, every second, we want to uh, re-render the page with the new value for our state variable. Um, but the one problem with this is once we re-render the page, um, it will basically create a new instance of this component, and it will start at the top again. So once we re-render, we're going to start at the top. We're going to declare this, declare this, declare this. And then we're going to create another interval. Um, but the interval that we created previously, one second ago, is still programmed to run every second. And we haven't told it to stop running every second. We haven't used clear interval in order to actually clear out that interval and stop it from running. Which means that the interval from a second ago is still being told to run every second. And now we created another interval that's also being told to run every second. And you can probably see where this is going, where that old one is going to re-render the page every second. The new one's going to re-render the page every second. And then every time we re-render, we're creating yet another interval that's being told the same thing. So we start with one interval. And then once we re-render, now we have two intervals firing off. So on second two, both of those intervals are going to fire, and both of them are going to trigger a re-render which means they also both update the state variable and console log. And then once they set the state interval, that'll mean another re-render, which means four intervals now exist because the previous two created their own intervals. So now we're at four intervals. 
And then each of those one second later are going to trigger re-render, which leads to eight intervals being created, because each of those create their own. And then that leads to 16, 32, 64, and so on, which is just an exponential function. Um, so that is the main problem they're running into here, where whenever you re-render a page, you really have to think about what code was running on the previous render, and is that code still being told to fire off once I re-rendered a page? Because that can lead to some really big efficiency issues. So the solution to this problem is actually using the re-rendering to our advantage, where instead of creating an interval that's being told to run every second, we can actually just use our set timeout function for this. Um, and inside of it, we can put the exact same code that we had before, our console log and our state variable. And inside of that, I'm just going to say, run this guy every second. And now, instead of creating an interval that's being told to run every second, we're just saying, OK, one second later, I want to update my state variable, and then I'm done. So I'm going to comment this out, and we're going to see what happens here. Um, we're at 6,107, uh, and we can see it's changing color every second as we were previously, but the console log is only going up by one every time instead of exponentially increasing. And that's because if we walk through this code again, um, we start by creating our colors array, state variable, button click, very standard. And then once we get to our set timeout, we are creating a function that one second later will update the value of our state variable and trigger a re-render. And then this function is totally done. So it's not going to run a second time or a third time because it's not running on an interval. So once we re-render the page, we start at the top again. We create our colors, our state, our button. And then we create another set timeout, which also triggers our state function to update one second later. And so on and so forth. So every render, we create a new timeout that updates our state variable one second later. So that was just a brief explanation on what code actually gets run on a render and some of the stuff that you have to think about. And in the next section, we'll actually discuss some of the hairier situations where you have some code that you only want to run once, but every time you re-render the page, you don't want that code to run a second time. And there's a function for this called useEffect, which we can actually use for this purpose.